just really, really thrilled, pleased with the way our guys played today. I thought uh, coming into the game, I really felt there's been so much talk about the, the great defenses that we've played against in this run, and, and this defense was fantastic as well. And I told our defense coming into the game tonight, a lot of guys, you know, you're not getting much attention. They're talking about our offense, and I really believe our defense is a very, very, very good defense. We played the number one offense in the country in Mount Union. We played the number eight or nine offense in the country in Wheaton College, and that skews the numbers. And I really thought our defense was the difference today. You know, these two guys and, and, and Greenfield here put a, put a show on an offense, but at the same time, our defense got stop after stop after stop and put the ball back in the hands of these guys uh, and really allowed us to, to, you know, establish a nice lead by halftime. Uh, the rain in the second half made things a little difficult for both teams, but uh, just thrilled to be moving on. This is a, a great football team we played against today, a classy organization, really. I just. Coach Millen and, and the entire program I've been very, very impressed with from start to finish going all the way back to last Sunday. Uh, so we feel very, very fortunate to be moving on. We're extremely excited to, to be heading to Texas for our first Stag Bowl in program history. And uh, you know, having said that, I've given these guys a chance to talk. They did all the work. <laughs> Has it been a long time coming for you? Do you feel that way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's 2002 my dad took this program over and, and he had this dream. You know, to win a national championship. He won state championships in high school at the highest level in Illinois football. And his friends all told him, what are you doing taking the North Central job? It's a, it's, it's a graveyard. You can't win there. And he said, you know, I want to take our philosophy that, that we've got in, in high school and plug it into a college program. And I think it works. I think if you put the well-being of young men first, this is my father talking, and, and you help them learn what manhood looks like and you teach those lessons that you can win football games. And it didn't take long. Um, that first year we had a great senior class that allowed us to go six and four, first winning season in 15 years at North Central. And it's just kind of been working forward from there. You know, we talked last year about Chase the Line goals. Those are God-sized goals that, without divine intervention, they're, they're destined to fail. And, and we, we embrace faith in our program. That's something that he instilled in 2002. We talk about it regularly. And there's no question that I don't believe in coincidence. There's just too many things that have fallen into place over the last couple of years. And these guys have bought in. And at the end of the day, it's about them and what they've done and how hard they play for each other. And uh, we're not done yet. we still got one more to go. That, that's the goal. It has been since 2002. I was amazed that you were able to just run the ball right up the middle. You were able to get the ball to your best receiver anytime you wanted, mostly on the out patterns. How are you able to do that? It's, it seems so easy against a good defense. Yeah, you know what? I think it's really tough to prepare when you, when you have an offense that it starts all up front. Our offensive line is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that forces teams to have to account for our running game. And we've got, in my opinion, the best quarterback in the country and I think the best receiver in the country, too. And we're, that's kind of an embarrassment of riches on offense. So we're very fortunate to have that. They've got to defend the whole field, you know, horizontally, horizontally vertically, and then you got to deal with Ethan and, and Terrence Hill, who we got back a few weeks ago for this playoff run, it makes it really hard um, from a defensive standpoint. We ran into that with Mount Union. You know, I mean, how do you stop an offense that can run, that can pass with a dynamic quarterback, a receiver like Justin Hill? Oftentimes the answer is you really can't. And you just got to keep fighting and stay in the game. And that's why I thought it was so important today that our defense played well. They've got a great quarterback. They've got an All-American tight end. Um, those two defensive ends are dynamic players, and, and that was really a focus for us. We saw some things on film that reminded us of the 2013 Platteville team, and we, we pulled some things out from that game that we haven't done all year this year, and it really made a big difference in our running game. What happened at the hotel two nights ago? <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> we got in late, and there was it was a pet-friendly hotel, so we had some St. Bernard's barking. And, uh, <laughs> It was fun though. It's it's kind of it's it's kind of what's happened our whole year. I mean, you go all the way back to Christopher Newport. Our our flight was changed. It was canceled. We were supposed to fly into Norfolk. We ended up having to fly into uh, Washington D.C. on Thursday. So we we arrive at 3 a.m. Friday morning. Stay in a hotel. Get up. We got two buses. We got to drive to from D.C. to uh, Newport News. Offensive bus dies at that hotel. We send the defensive bus on. It dies on I-95 in, in D.C. So we got guys under you know a tarmac. Or not tarmac, but a, an overpass for 45 minutes. Um, so it, it, we laughed at it, though. It just and, and I thought that was a great way to kick off the season. Like, hey, if we want to make a run and we want to do something special, crazy things, adversity is going to be thrown at us. If we laugh at it and just say, hey, what else you got? What what else can you bring our way? Because we're ready for it. 
we're going to keep swinging. Yeah. I, I, I thought it stood out um, that you guys scored 45 points today. You somebody has four touchdown catches in the first half and five touchdown throws in the first half. And as you circled up your team after the game, the first thing you did was point out the defensive play that was me. Uh, why was that play such a, uh, why did that stand in your mind in a game full of offensive play? And any, any of you can answer that, to be honest with you. How well was that play? Defense wins championships. That's where you want to go. That's where we're trying to get to. They struggle here and there, but we have faith in them. And for them to come out and do what they did today was really reassuring for us to know that what we do on offense, we're going to go out and perform against anybody. And then for them to come out and play against that offense and do what they did, it's just more confidence to us. And I think it's a great example of the adversity we talk about. There's some adversity first play of the game. I throw an interception, and I think it was two plays later, he comes out and makes an interception. That just shows the kind of resiliency we have on this team. And we, like Coach said, we literally laugh at things that go wrong. And, it's helped us along the way, and we just are able to bounce back from things. And you got to give huge credit to Julian. That was a huge play in the game, and shifted momentum right back into our favor. The crazy thing was Julian was on our turf on Wednesday and, and had to leave the field. He was on crutches on Wednesday. Our field was like a like an ice rink. It was so cold. And he jumped, landed on his knee. We didn't know what was wrong. Um, had an MRI, and luckily, fortunately, he was able to come back and play. Practiced a little bit Thursday, and he's. He's not very big, but he's tough. What do you What do you see on the interception? And, and yeah, how does it feel? Uh, I mean, I just saw you know they're trying like a cup or four beater. Uh, yeah, twenty five. Uh, Braden he came through and deflected the ball, and it just landed in my hands. So at that point, you know, I'm just looking for green grass and looking to slow it my way. I mean, I wasn't moving pretty fast uh, due to my knee, but uh, I was just trying to get as much as I can and hold onto the ball. Did, did you think on Wednesday at some point we were laying on the turf that you were going to play today? Uh, honestly, it hurt so bad then and there. I didn't know like what I was going to do. When, so when did you know you were going to be able to play? Thursday morning. All right. Julian, what does it say about the defense that each week it seems like somebody else is coming up? The big play, Zach Butler. You know, you this week. I feel like, <clears throat> like Coach said, we learned to embrace adversity. And the big thing is that uh, we play as a family, and we have to understand that every week it's not going to be the same player that's going to make the play. Um, and, you know, you kind of have to do that as a team and a family mindset. So, I mean, as long as we have that mindset, we know that the next person is going to make a play. All right, you offensive guys don't get off the hook here. <laughs> <laughs> what, was there a point in the first half um, I mean, was that, is that the best first half you've ever had? Uh, and was there a point where you said, this is easy, this is too easy, like, almost like, I can't believe how well this is going? No, I mean, they're such a great defense, you know, that we knew that. We knew we had to stay foot on the pedal the whole time and keep working, and that's been our mindset all year. And like I said, we threw an interception the first place. So that shows how well our guys did bouncing back. Our offensive line was phenomenal in the first half. and. We got so many weapons that'll make plays. This kid's making plays every week. Ethan's making plays every week. We got Blake Williams with a 55-yard touchdown or whatever it was today. Guys step up in these moments. Everyone loves these big moments, and it, it was never too easy. They're a great defense, and we just had to keep fighting all game. <coughs> Have yeah. you faced anybody with your team speed? Uh, yeah. 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 We in college and, and Montgomery mm -hmm. are, I'll tell you what, Delaware Valley speed. Yeah. Yeah. They're, those three defenses were very fast. Um, yeah, so, you know, having an opportunity to play some great defenses week in and week out, it seems like, has been uh, a big benefit to us as we continue to move forward. And next week, it doesn't matter who we play, it's going to be a great defense. Uh, but it, it really just falls back on this guy pulling the, pulling the trigger and making great decisions, having incredible vision, and believing and never, ever, ever doubting that we're going to win. And when you got guys who all buy into that, crazy good things can happen. Andrew, one last thing for me at least. Uh, I believe, as far as I can tell, you're the first player in all levels of NCAA with 30 receiving touchdowns in a single season. Yeah. Uh, can you just kind of put into words? It's mind-boggling for me. Is it? Is it for you? Uh, yeah, you were actually the first person I ever like to mention that, so I didn't know at the time. But uh, yeah, it's just the key to all the hard work that I've put in, all the stuff that I've been through. And I just got to get off to like, uh, Coach Thorne for giving me the chance to play here and giving me the opportunity and trusting me and then having an offensive line allowing for us to do what we do. But, yeah, it's a great 
great, uh, great accomplishment. Uh, I'm going to cherish it for forever, but we, like we said, we still got one more to go. Randy lost at 27 in Division One. That's <laughs> amazing. Did you have any opportunities to play higher coming out of high school? Uh, yeah, so I actually, out of high school, was at Winona State, a D2 school in Minnesota, and I found out Brock transferred into uh, North Central, and then I said, uh, I have to come and take this opportunity because we were going to play in high school together. I've known Brock for a long time now, so okay. I had to take okay. advantage of the opportunity. How long? Uh, oh, freshman year of high school, yeah, we are 14, 15. A little bit of chemistry there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody like trust. Right. right. Um, could you tell us about that offensive line? Because this was a, a, a defensive front that had wreaked havoc in, in a lot of its uh, previous games, and it felt like um, your line held up well against them today. Why don't you take that? Yeah. So um, they played great like they, like they normally do. And just uh, I think what coaches kind of mentioned on the teams that we've played in the past, like the Wheaton, the Del Valley, the Mount Union has prepared them for moments like this because this was a great defense with talent all over the front seven and that line. They handled it so well just because they're so used to it at this point because we've been going week in, week out playing these great teams and they just keep getting better, keep getting better, and they understand that it's never going to be easy. And they accept that challenge wholeheartedly and they play great and then that's, that's what happens. Brock has time to throw. We get huge running lanes for everyone. And just It's all accustomed to how hard they work throughout the week and how much time they put in the film and study their opponent to really make uh, things like this happen. Is there a catch of among the 11 and the, the four touchdowns that stands out to you? Uh, to me, the one that stands out was the second touchdown catch when I had to, when Brock just threw it over the yeah. defender and I had to go up and get it. So that, that one stands out to me today, but yeah. Well, somehow I forgot about that one. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. I didn't have a good view of the one where it was almost your fifth touchdown. I think you went out at the one or the two. Yeah. How close were you? I, didn't. I was told from everybody that was standing right there that I was in, so I don't really know what happened. All I was trying to do, I saw, I broke, my, I made the catch, broke one tackle, and saw me and one, one other guy into the pylon. So when I know that, I just going to lower my shoulder and try to do what I can to get into the end zone. A have smart had, coach would have challenged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you had five in a game? No, I've not. Four? Yeah, this was the second time. Okay. Anything else? Congratulations, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.